Facebook, and then when you when you, uh, I'm actually I, I literally just turned the damn thing on. I hit, I, hit the, I hit the switch. I'm sorry, dude. I should have done like a tiny. Thing. <laughs> but you can just share it now from my from my Facebook, folks. So, so guys, this is this is this is how professional I am, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm the professional here, or or something to that effect. JD is just he has to. He has to make me look good because Lord knows I can't do it myself. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. This is episode 502. Although it, it, it was, it, there was at one point JD was going to be my 500th episode. It just, it was, I had, I had two, I had two uh, good, really good things happen. One, I interview, got an opportunity to interview um, someone that's written for the New York Times, the, the CNN and, and Psychology Today and, that Natasha Ralph came on Wednesday last week, so I just I, I couldn't say no to that. And then number two, and then number two, um, so that moved you to five hundred one. And then and then then the uh, infamous Will could not get on to save his life, so I made up the episode with Will last night. So now this is also technically a makeup episode because this was supposed to happen on Monday. Wait, was it Monday? I, yeah, I don't know. it was supposed to happen Monday because it's like I. That one is, I sent you, I remember sending you a link and you were like, oh man, this is tonight. You're like, oh crap. Because no. you, 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 apparently you had a day from hell last week. Uh, it, it was a week. It was, it was quite the week, I have to admit. Uh, but I'm still kicking. I'm, I'm just a bit tired. So you're going to get a more deep, gravelly, velvety voice. Hey, yeah, it is JD Hijinx Rider. He is nice to see you. Welcome to the show. All right, we are doing a live live interview. This is going to be a bit of an interview. And obviously, anyone who wants to ask questions on either Facebook or or Twitch, we'll get responses. I will admit that it's easier for me to get to Facebook, so it, Twitch will be the easier of the two if you want to ask questions. But I will get to your Facebook comments eventually. My guest is the great JD Estrada. JD is definitely one of the. He's quietly one of the most. I, I, I think I can honestly say, "Hey, Julia." Nice to see you, Julia. Nice to see you. Um, but uh, I, I think, honestly, JD, I think you're probably one of the most diverse jack of all trades. I think I know, and that's saying a lot because there's a lot of people that are that are very skilled. But I, I was thinking about you the other day because I was when I interviewed Nadia, who was awesome. That was a fun. That was fun. That was super yeah, fun. No, no, Nadia. Nadia's a barrel of laughs, and she's she's a she's a sweetheart. And yeah, I know she is. She was like, I'm so nervous. I was like, yeah, just talk about it. It's me. And it's like, that's all she needed. And she just went and went. I actually was like, it was one of the easiest interviews I've ever had to do because it was like, I don't got to say anything. This is fantastic, right? No, her cousin is the same. It's like, no, and I don't, I don't think the same. I think Nadia is is a bit more, she, she might be a bit, bit more trepidatious and be a bit more 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 shy. Her Her cousin is like full on. No, she's that, from, that, that, from, that, 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 she would know, Nadia, Nadia is shy. Hey, nice, nice to see you, Heidi, on on Facebook too. Uh, yeah, he, he he's got the velvety voice for sure. I'm, I'm it's JD's got the velvety voice. I don't know what mine is, but I know JD's the velvet of the two of us. But what I was going, what I was going to say though is, you're you're probably. I was thinking about this. You write in two languages. I believe you like like you advertise, you do PR, you broadcast, like. You have an incredibly diverse skill set. I, I don't get bored. I, I, I'm always fascinated when I hear people say, oh, I'm so bored. It's like, I'm tired and I'm oh, short yeah. on time, but bored, I'm, I'm never bored. Man. I always have something to do. I, 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 I'm, I'm of that, I'm of that uh, variety too. Like I, I'm, constantly, I'm constantly just doing stuff all the time because uh, I'm learning. Like, like for me, like, I, as you can see, I've been illustrating a lot more in the last little bit. Which is cool, uh, and you've you've sat down with some pretty interesting people, Matt. Oh, good God, good God! I, I don't know what I did to deserve it, but it's just like one of those things where it just it just it it fell in my lap, and I got some cool people still coming this month. Like this week, it's AP Fuchs. He's coming back, but this time we're drawing. That's Wednesday night, and then on Friday, because he did, because he couldn't do Friday, um, Rich Perot is actually coming out on Friday, and Rich is actually one of my favorite dudes. Period. Because so. My story with Rich is this: He beat cancer literally a week, like right the week before I met him. He beat cancer. We started talking because I, I um, who Jennifer Ann Gordon. I interviewed Jennifer Ann. Jennifer introduced me to Rich. Okay. Me and Rich hit it off. He goes, "Hey, listen, I just beat cancer. I, I kind of want to go on your show." 
I wasn't quite ready to do that. I wasn't quite ready to do anything because this was right before this was just was just me getting like started and rolling with the drink. This was in November. And uh I was like, okay, we can do a fun one just for just for shits and giggles. It was my favorite like the first one was my favorite chat of the whole year because he did like this my little pony castle gray skull like harley quinn as zombie apocalypse thing it was amazing um he's one what, of my what do you want to do well i beat cancer so let's just hang out yeah that's it that was it that was literally it that was the con like what am i going to say like like hey i beat cancer let's celebrate okay fuck yeah let's celebrate oh, right? <laughs> but um that was that was an incredible that like so i've had this like mar parks incredible Mog and Ann, I, I saw I, I saw I saw bits of, of both those and those were, were fun. They're they're super they're super sweet and super talented. Oh, both oh, of them. On, on I'm gonna be working with sometime this year. Like the, like not this book. This book is the one I, I'm illustrating, but the one afterwards, the one afterwards, like so I had this idea for like this pulp series. Mm. And I thought it'd be really cool. I, I'm I'm gonna try to talk Mog into like doing a cover video. I have a so I want to do. I'm gonna do, but Ann's gonna do. Ann's agreed to do the first one, and because on to my wonderful, to our wonderful surprise, is a big pulp heroin fan. So it's like, okay, cool. I'm gonna ask them the previous. Like, I've worked with a lot of women. Like, honestly, in my in my art in like my artistic career, they and get I'm very, Yeah. Well, no, just it's just they're amazing. Like every every woman I've worked with has been actually just about. I I with one exception. Every woman I have worked with, and even the one that did not go well, um, I learned an awful lot about how to be a professional. And a lot of that has to do with the women I've worked with, whether it's been uh, Kenzie Carr, who's incred incredibly talented. She did the Al Zero thing. Mm -hmm. Lawrence is probably the most professional person I've ever worked with, bar none. My editor, Ellen Michelle, is an incredible professional herself. She's her heart, I love her, like her heart's on her sleeve. So I've had like this, I, so I have my publisher from, is based actually in the city I'm living in, Windsor, Ontario, Justine. Incredibly nice, generous, amazing woman. Awesome. So I've, I've been very fortunate with like the women I've worked with. So what I kind of want to do for the, the pulp series is, you know, it'd be really cool to get some of the past ones. Like I would like to get Kenzie and Florence back to do a cover on, on depending on the settings I do. Right, just the different settings, and mm -hmm. and uh, but I also want to see like Anz agreed to do the first one. I wanted to see if I can get um, Kaylin Smith. I don't know if you know who that is, but if you mm -hmm. don't, check out uh, for goodness, the comic for goodness sake. Kaylin's send, an amazing story. Send me the send me the link later. My 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 hard drive is 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 fried, so it's like, <laughs> your, your is like remember this, and I'm like I won't, but yeah, go God bless you. Right? It's like it's like write it down, and I'm like dude. dude. No, <laughs> right now, no. No, nah. yeah, no, it, like it gets crazy. Like when you get really, really busy, like when you get really, really busy, it, it, you forget what you're supposed to do. Like half the time you forget, it's like, what the, what the hell am I doing today? The thing is that I can, I can tackle a crazy to-do list. Like, like I can have 20 items in a day and if it doesn't shift, I'm going to get it done. But if everything's constantly shifting and it's like, no, stop this and do that, that's when productivity suffers. And plus, I can't get like a little nugget of time for me to do something that makes me smile. And that's that. That's when you're gonna see me more curmudgeon-y. Well, no, it, it sucks because it, it, like sometimes shit happens. Like sometimes it's it's beyond anybody's control. It does that does happen, right? But when it's not, like when you can tell that someone just doesn't have their shit together. Oh, oh, that's brutal. No, and when the default setting is is shit show, it's like Jesus Christ, man. Can we can we just take a step back? Can you can we buy me some time? And that's that's like that's I can tattoo that on my arm and go like, can you buy me some time? Yeah, can you like no shit shows a lot. Well, I, actually, that's the thing. Right, like right now. So right now, I'm in a very sport. I'm almost a year into being a freelancer. I, I I've done some really cool things this year. Mm -hmm. Um. I think the hardest thing for me was figuring out what the fuck I was good at. I know it sounds really, really, really like simple. No, people people think that they're great at everything, and you know, some sometimes you writing your own reality check is a, is a lot better than having someone have to tell you point blank, dude, you kind of suck. Well, yeah, but also just like. I think streaming has been a great lesson in this too. I, I because uh, what I've learned is. Like what a streamer is essentially doing is what freelancers are supposed to do, 
is mm -hmm. that you take one particular thing, doesn't matter what it is. Sorry to hear it's been a show for you, Julia. I, I really, really am. I hope I hope it gets better. Um, this, like, like, um, but I learned this, like a streamer will play a game that they're really good at. And they're Julia, all driving. Julia, everything's retrograde, by the way. Everything. Yes. Not oh. just Mercury. Everything. Okay. Uh, yeah. Chaos is king. Yes. Abs uh, and Heidi, you're absolutely right. The prior presentation change does get very daunting. But, um, well, like what I realized, like I realized the biggest lesson I learned this year is I'm good at a lot of things, but I think that I think for me, the thing that's probably going to make me my money as a freelancer is going to be like interviews because I do those very, 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 very well. And those are the, uh, the streaming. If you sit there and think about it is really the art of taking something you do really well and just keep constantly broadcasting it over and over and over and over again and creating, creating a, a buzz. So mm -hmm. Me going this way, me going this way. I wish I had done it six months ago. Shit, I'd probably be making money at this right now. <laughs> okay, but but if you can look into the future six months and see it as something feasible and something that'll get done, that's better than being right now today going like, wow, what am I going to do? Yeah. If you're like, this is, this is going to pan out so I can keep going with this and do this and do this and that, everything's going to complement itself and, and it's going to work. And just to have that, ah, oh, man, that's... Cheers. Yeah, awesome. muzzle thought to that. Yeah, yeah, you got it. Like, I'm still and I'm still publishing books. Like I like so my next one. I'm I'm illust I'm actually going to do some of the illustrations on it. So is that the is that the dragon one? No, the dragon ones. That's the one that An's going to do. That's okay. the one I'm going to do because she's better than me. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I, I I mentioned the concept to my wife and she was like, ah, oh, that's cool. So. Go for it. Yeah. Because she was like, I've never heard something like that. So Yeah. When you when you when you capture an idea, if you don't run quickly enough, someone else is gonna do it. So do it because from the get-go no. when you said it, I was like, damn, that's a good idea. But yeah, well, oh, I got lots of them. Well, I'm doing my I'm doing I'm doing my Fahrenheit 451 homage right now, which is uh called Lights Out. Homage. It is a homage. The main character's name is Montag and, and Montag and then even there's even um a Clarice in the story. Oh, wow. I just yeah, so the idea is, well, I, I've been, so one of the things, like, like historically for me, I've always been fascinated with the Tower of Babel. Like, the idea of the Tower of Babel is a very fascinating concept to me. And uh, Orwell, George Orwell talks about it a little bit with his government, how language controls thoughts. And mm -hmm. that came across the other day. And I realized that we're kind of in a Tower of Babel right now. And that's, like, honestly, the fact is we're all connected by the Internet. But if you sit there and think about it, we're connected by the medium of a light bulb. Right, oh. right. If you really sit there, and that's and and if you really sit there and think about that, if tomorrow, if tomorrow all the lights went out, pop like that tomorrow, just hypothetically, the world would the world as we know it would end. There'd be no more pandemic. We'd have a lot bigger problems than 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 that right now tomorrow. Like, but that's we wouldn't that. have anything to stream. That would be that would be chaos. I right, total chaos. But I mean that we're kind of in a weird tower of Babel moment right now. And I and I just and it's an inter it's a fascinating thing to me. So I, I thought, let's play with that concept. So that's what I'm working. And I and I thought, the guy that actually did this, like I loved Fahrenheit 451. I really dug that book. So it's like, so if I could take the spirit of that and kind of do a fun little homage, but say something about today and the same thing. I was like, that's my, also my one up. I, I feel like one, that's my one shot in. Then it's parallel universe dragon slaying and Allison's Greek mythology the rest of the way this year. So quick question: Quick question between Brave New World, Fahrenheit four five one, and nineteen eighty four, which are like the classic dystopian government type of things. Which one did you prefer, if any, or do you like each for for different reasons, or have you not read some of them? I've read all three. Um, Orwell's is depressing. Just depressing. Because my best my best friend was like, dude, wait till you get to that last sentence. And he 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 pumped that up, and I'm like, okay, okay. When I get to the last sentence, I'm like, how can how can someone warn me and tell me this is gonna happen and blah blah blah? And I know it's coming, and I'm like, I, I see the pages, and then I read the last sentence, and I just feel awful. Yeah, I'm no, like, no, I'm no. like, oh god, that's yeah. that's the last sentence. And, yeah, and, like and anyone who skips and reads that last sentence first is doing themselves such a disservice. Absolutely. No, I, um, that book's depressing, but it's also accurate. You want real depressing from Orwell? Read his political commentaries. 
I'm Those are I'm, fucking depressing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm afraid, man. I'm yeah. afraid because it, so many people have, it, it's like in the 40s and 50s, they wrote about stuff that they were like, oh, it's going to happen in 2001. No, it just it was just 19 years late. Yeah. And it's crazy because it, the level of accuracy, not to the level of, of The Simpsons, which I think are our modern day Nostradamus, because every time I see, ah, uh, the, the Simpsons predicted, I'm like, ah, what? And then I see the clip of the news clip, and then I see the Simpsons clip, and I go like, oh, dude, what? That's that, that's too much, even if it's animated. You just, well, um, we, we can talk about metaphysics of everything happens at once, and we're just catching up to the moment if we want. But no, I mean, so for me, the the the, the three dystopian things I actually talked about this um, Joe show, the network was very dystopian for me because I honestly, it, it, that's, that talks about the nature of how the world works. I actually see a lot of what's going on. Here, here's the thing about like, like I kind of, this, this has been the flip side of the lockdowns. The people that have been very rich have gotten a lot richer. So the question, so from a financial, from, from a financial point of view for those particular people, the longer we're in lockdown, the better it is for them. Right. So and so this idea and as long as we're fighting each other, right, as long as we're fighting each other, no one's paying wiser to that. So the longer. And so by the and it's funny because I, I was talking to someone in India, their small businesses are helping, are bailing everybody out, helping each other, working together. So, I mean, that yes, there's there's an old government regime there, but the small businesses are stronger there and they're actually helping people get through this time here where all the wealth is, the small businesses are being eaten alive. Nice. So what's happening, so, so, so what's happening, so what's happening here is any support structure for any of us trying to build something for ourselves is been cut away. We're almost, we almost have to go back to the very beginning right now. Um, so, and, and as far as the Orwellian concept, I mean, here's, I did, as, this is as Orwellian as it gets, I can go outside the work, but I can't go outside the play. And that I think that is that is very that is as Orwellian as you get, and so in that part it's like that's why Orwell's depressing because Orwell understood understood human nature in a very very way way. Bradbury is my favorite because it's the only one that's ever scared me, right? It, that one actually frightened the fuck out of me, and the fact that I see the giant uh, um, the giant big screen TVs like yeah. like, like like I see that and I'm like. He was a genius. He was a genius. Um, but uh, yeah, all, all three are, are are scary for different reasons. But again, yes. again, it's it's the accuracy. It's like the first time someone saw saw a submarine, they would go like, "Did you read that book about twenty thousand? That's that's did he steal the plans? Because it's pretty close there." Well, even even the helicopter, like I mean, science fiction. As you go back that, like, just look at the concepts like Da Vinci's helicopter. It's not that different from what actually came about in terms of principle, right? We we've all we've had this we have this great history of we have this is our this is our greatest power honestly is that we have this ability to take these ideas we have and make them real, right? It right it basically that's that is our great power. It's our great curse too because it. We tend to go where our mind focuses on, and that's just that's individually, and that's also, um, I think, as a group. So if the group's afraid of what comes next, and we stay still, therefore, as a general rule of thumb, the group will stay still, mm -hmm. right? If, however, the group goes, okay, let's see what happens tomorrow. Uh, let's see, let, let's go forward. Let's create a better future. We imagine what that better future is, and have the more clearer, concrete book that becomes. The more likely that future happens. Well, demo, often, right? demolition, man. We just yeah, need yeah. The, we just need the seashells at this point. Yeah, that's right. Three seashells. I still don't know how to oh. use them. I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure there's a way. I'm sure, oh, really? I, no, no, no. I, I shared the diagram uh, the other day because uh, it's something that that I always found fascinating, and I found the diagram like two or three years ago. Um, it's three seashells. You take two seashells. You pinch you pull and you use the third one to scrape the remaining area and you flush everything. And I'm like, that doesn't sound practical. No. And, and I'm like, and just flushing that at what, is it, is it like a food process or like, mm. yeah, for, yeah, yeah I, no man. It's like, Ugh. no, I, but that, that's, there's a, there is a diagram and the diagram makes no sense, dude. 
some someone I, I'm sure some I, I, whoever came up with that had a really really bizarre sense of humor. I could totally see the I could totally see that or um, an aversion to seafood. Yeah, one or the other. I mean, it, it make me not eat. No, I, I um no like like that's the thing. Like I I can like I see it's. I, like I said, I'm hoping. I'm hoping when we get to this, like the springtime in the second half of this year, people go, okay, let's just let's just let's just get on to whatever's next, whatever that looks like, and it's it's a better place. That's that's my hope. We'll see what happens. Well, I, I'm not gonna bet on anything. I'm not, I'm not. I'm definitely not gonna bet on GameStop. Um, um, that's I don't. It. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. And the reaction of the people and people who are outraged, I'm like, seriously, you're outraged? Oh, God, get – I'm not even going to go there. No, no, no. I, 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 By the way, it's not that I'm a super supportive of GameStop because GameStop, their practices during lockdown have been questionable at best. It's like GameStop and Hobby Lobby are competing to be who's the bigger asshole in terms of their employees. And what they do to them. I think Hobby Lobby has a hefty, hefty, hefty advantage because I'm, I you saw I saw leaked uh, emails and letters of basically telling people that they had to go to work, and it's like, but right now we're in lockdown. We don't care. We we got a we got a message from God, and God says that you have to work. I don't. I have to stay safe to provide to you, but you have to work and stuff like that. And it's like, what? Uh, GameStop was were just raffling, uh, you know, just just spots on. It's like, well, let's see who who's gonna have some hours to work this week. It's like, what? It's just bizarre, dude. Right, it, 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 we are in a weird time. Uh, like I said, we just it, it's just one of those things. I, I'm well, like for me, I know like this year, like my goal by the end of this year is I'll be on the road. Like regardless of how this is all gonna play out, I'm gonna wander. It, it's gonna. It's not gonna be Mad Max. It's gonna be Mad Josh. That's right. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I look, look. I, I, I sincerely hope when people like when I made when how to put this. I have thought about this in great detail. I have actually thought about this in great great detail, and I just it occurs to me that, um, at some point, if really if you really want to be perfectly blunt, I'm gonna go. And it's probably going to be painful, but if you accept that, if you can accept that, um, you can pretty much you're free to do whatever you'd like. And for me, I've always just loved. Again, I love doing this. I like this is what I want to do. This is what I'm going to do. And whether or not, and I want. There's plenty to see. There's still things to do. There's still a lot of life worth the living. And I don't necessarily have to do what everybody else is doing. That might sound very, very like naive or selfish or whatever that you might want to say, but I just look at. If you take all the precautions, power to you. If you're yeah. reckless, you you. I'm I'm gonna go like you know what? I'm not gonna see Josh's channel uh, for a while because, and I I, I don't think that's your nature, by the way. Yeah. But I, I have seen some people that have taken some stances, and I go like, okay, I know that that maybe some people might think that I've been a bit extreme in terms of whatnot, but until you have pneumonia. And you wake up coughing blood that's not from just coughing, but true blood from, you know, mm -hmm. like pneumonia. Um, you can't tell me how to react and how to take precautions to no, know, be not. sure that I'm okay and, and that my wife okay, is okay. But the people and, and their stances in terms of a lot of things, I've gone like... Why? Uh, why can't you think of the other person and say, you know what? Let me let me do this to help this person out, or just just so that we can take care of each other. And at all points, you know, my my mantra is, I want to do my best to take care of everyone else. And then you see a guy blow a snot rocket in the middle of the road, and you go like, Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. No, I'm not, I'm, I'm it, 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 no no. It doesn't hurt us to help others. It never does. The the the. The, the issue, the, the only thing is, I, I, there there comes a. This is how I just see it. Later on, this is how I see it. At some at some point, you gotta go like, well, life's gonna go on, and you gotta do you gotta do what you feel you gotta do. Now that all said, I, I it's like this. Like my grandmother's in Windsor right now, mm -hmm. right? I, and she decided, oh, kindness and consideration never hurts ever. Like the way, let me give you an example. So I was supposed to go. I was supposed to go hang out with my grandmother this weekend a little bit. 
She just said, like, listen, I hope you understand. I just, I don't feel good about the fire. I said, okay, no problem. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put myself in a position where it's just like, like, I don't blame anybody for what they feel about this. At, at whatever side of the fence you're on, I know that might sound very benevolent, but it just, I don't have a good answer. So I'm just like. No, I, I, I disagree because I've seen people cough on, on top of other people to make a statement. And, and I can't say that I think that's okay. Or I no, 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 I, no, no, going up to going up to someone, going up to someone, and and doing that just just being a dick, right? But and I there's, mean, there's a lot of that going around. Again, I know that I'm 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 operating based on fear and stuff like that, but it's just taking precautions and whatnot. And it's like if I don't have to do this because I don't have to do this, uh, if I have to do something for my well being or whatnot, it's like take a walk or go, you know, exercise or whatever, which mm -hmm. is stuff that people have to do and do it. Oh yeah, but it's it's the whole the wild west thing and i'm i'm gonna go up to that person and be confrontational because that's what we need in 2021 and i'm like oh dude okay. i don't really want to fight anybody i'm not interested in that like basically ah. basically basically i'm more like lines up listen i'm gonna do my thing if people want to hang out cool if people don't also cool i get it i'm not gonna i'm again not gonna force anything on anybody but i also know this too right it, it's for me personally i got there's nothing it's kind of weird to have nothing you really want in terms of things and you get other than doing stuff right and that's kind of where I, I i'm at it's like i because again it just it just hits you a certain way that no one's gonna live forever and yeah yeah you know, it hits you that way and when it hits you that way you're like okay what's worth doing for you and then you just and then just do those things that doesn't mean coughing on other people or 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 like that that you know extremism yeah um uh, and and in terms of doing stuff i, I think it's a, some people that go like oh this sucks and whatnot it's like okay how, what can you do to make it not suck or yeah or what can you do? what have you wanted to do that you didn't have the time to do and now you have zero excuse for not doing yeah exactly um, no, and i've done all that too like that no, dude you've been you've been on a tear uh, you're you're a prime example of how to be productive with your time and just enjoy yourself um i i bought an electric guitar i'm still pending to to buy uh, a, a proper mic because i want to record mm -hmm. and you know it's stuff that that i want to do and i'm gonna do when i when i have the means to do it and make sure that everything you know, everything's okay um but some people they, they just think that life right now has to be idle and it doesn't have to be idle you you just have to shift mm -hmm. and shifting doesn't mean not doing stuff it means not doing certain things uh if you think it's not the best idea but um i have uh, julie i have a, a playlist on youtube i'll pass it by so you can have a have a gander or I'll, I'll post it on my uh, on my channel so people people go like you play guitar and i'm like yeah and i do it an attempt at singing i'm not gonna do it live now because i I'm not that type of person. It's like, oh, you want to hear me sing? It's like, uh, no, uh, I'm I'm very, I, 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 very self-conscious. Uh, but I have, I, I think my favorite event that I ever did was in Puerto Rico in a place called the Poets Passage. Uh, I wanted to do like a bohemian night and whatnot. And I had six of my books with notes and I had my acoustic guitar and my brother bought me a bottle of wine and I didn't down the bottle of wine, but I had like one or two good glasses of wine. And I just, you know, read poetry, read from my, read from my books, played some songs and just had a good time. Man. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, like the singing, people would pay me to stop. Like they, 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 they don't, don't, don't. I, I, I don't really have, I'm surprised you're self-conscious to be very honest, because honestly, you're very prolific of what you do. Like, it, it, I, I honestly don't think it feel it would come off badly. But I, I also can kind of understand the fear too. Like, I, like for me, the illustration thing was, was very much uh, a little bit like, what if I suck? Yeah, right. And, 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 uh, is that it, or is it just like, is it that like for, you know, for me, it has to be on my terms. Um, uh, if someone goes like, oh, play me something, I'm, I go like, I'm not your monkey. And I, I don't I, I don't mean to be rude, but that's that's my no, sure. no I, that's I, my I, internal reaction, and I've never done that. I've never done that, and I never will because it's just not me. You know, doing an event and playing and saying, "Okay, I'm gonna sing," and I'm already 
doing the mental exercise that it's like, okay, dude, you're gonna do it if it sucks, and you do. If you miss a note, no one's gonna die. Uh, if you if you miss a chord, no one's gonna die. So just enjoy yourself. And actually, most of the songs that I I played at Poets Passage, since I'm nervous, um, one one thing is to play. The other thing is to play under pressure. And since you're tense when you're put when you put a chord my hand was even more tense and i was about to finish the song and then i got this super awkward cramp that never happens but it just goes to show what happens in a live setting yeah no anything can go wrong will go wrong sometimes and sometimes it's just it's it's but sometimes when it goes bad it's good too like it, it, there's a certain natural feel to it and i'm not saying like your hand taking your in pain isn't a good thing but like what, what Friday kind of taught me is it doesn't have to go according to plan to be good. No, right? it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, yeah. sometimes hearing hearing that that someone missed a note or that they 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 missed like a half a beat or something, you go like, oh, that's the person. It's not it's not a recording. They're not lip syncing or anything. They're they're sharing something right now, and and it's a validation of that because some people are so pristine that you go like, was that them? And and you're never gonna get that from me. You're always gonna go like, yeah, that was order. Yeah, no, it's, it's all good. Now I also get like, actually, I'm doing a freelance talk next weekend, and one of the things I actually am talking about in the freelance conversation is the importance of saying no. Like that's the other big lesson I've learned this year is you can't just perform on command. Like I, I uh, like I said, I, I've always been helpful, but one of the things I've been consciously doing as time has gone on is I've set more boundaries about what I will and will not do. Right. And I find that what will I will not do list is growing bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. And, um, and in both directions. Yes. Because yeah. people say people say, oh, so you're gonna do less things. It's like, no, I'm just gonna do more of what I am willing to do. And the stuff that really doesn't sound like a good idea or feel like a good idea, I'm not. And mm -hmm. and people really, really need to learn, you know, to and, and like you're doing, like nurture each of those lists. It's not a bad thing to say, no, ah, I don't want to do that. Why don't you want to do that? And the thing is that if you, if you rationalize it and you, and, you, and you truly understand why you're doing it, because if it just comes from a place of fear, then you, you might be holding out on yourself. But it's, if it's because it's not enjoyable or because it, something just feels off, um, then, but you gave yourself a try or two, because sometimes yeah. you need to try a second time and you go like, okay, I'm, I'm certain that I, I don't like doing this. Um, but a lot of people, uh, I don't think I'm going to like that. Have you, have you tried that piece of sushi? Have you tried that ingredient on a pizza? Yes, pineapple and, and ham can coexist in a pizza and no one's going <laughs> to die. Oh, God. And anchovies don't work on pizza. I've tried. I just, I've tried. I tried it. It was just, I, not for me. Just not I, for me. I like it. The thing is that anchovies is, anchovies have such, it's, you know, you either like anchovies or you don't. You don't kind of like anchovies. No, it's, it's this one This isn't ketchup. Yeah, no, no. It, it's one of those things where you either really like it or you really don't. And I just realized I really don't. But if you like it, <laughs> I, like power to you, right? I mean, I'm not here to. I like it, but I recognize that you know I I sometimes feel for my wife if if we're having a like a meal and I I order something with anchovies and I go like yeah uh, okay let me let me make sure that I drink a lot of water so that I don't kill her at at a you know close distance with our conversation. <laughs> no, I uh, no, I, like I I it's professionally I think it's super important to have those nose in there. I actually so. I'm doing, and although it's technically a day job, it's a temp job. I only agreed to work like two days a week, and I realized I realized um, after last week that it's I just, I'm not going to be there very long. But I just like one of those things where I just you just again it's, it's a conscious thing. I've said like in my head I've said no. Now I know eventually it's going to play out in real life that that no is going to translate into the universe somewhere somehow some way, and I, and then I know this, right? I have given myself. If I, if I last a month, it's everything I need to go to what's next. And that's basically what I'm doing. I'm going to last one month. I do my month. Then I walk away. Because I know deep down, deep down on the inside that it will not work out. And there's no point in me sticking around to something that will do, like, makes you feel that way on the inside. 
it's not fun. It's not happy. It's not. And it can, it can go on for way too long. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I can, I can speak to that. I won't speak in depth to that, but that can really happen. No, 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 it does. We all, we all have it. Like, I think, I think one of the most honest things we can, like, if you're not, if you don't, I, I'm in a good position for another little bit about not really needing to go or do anything or anywhere right now, which is great. It gives me a lot of leverage. But even if I had nothing, I still, I've come to the point in my life where it's like, I'm either going to do the things I really love to do, right? And I don't care how I do it one way or the other, whether I am in a nice place and a mean place, I'm just going to do those things. That's where I've hit, that's where I've hit this life. I'll do other things if I have to along the way for short periods of time. But I know like it, the transition is, this is what I want to do. This is, this is about where I want to go. This is about who I want to be and every, and everything else does not matter. And it's a very, it's a very, um, it's very freeing. It's also means like, I mean, it's going to be uncomfortable at times because you, you that, there is a lot of, there is a lot of what can I put, how do I put this? Um, you have to go through, I think, a filtering process even in the nose sometimes to get to the, the yeses you want. And I think that's where I'm at right now is I'm filtering my nose. And that's a very, uh, it's a very. And, and, and there's, there are different types of nose also. Yeah. There are there are no's in terms of the moment. Right now, yeah. I can't do this. Yes. There's a no that uh, I'm not going to do it, but if I have to, I'll do it. And there's a no like, please block me on social media um, and just 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 get away from me. I've never gotten to that point with anyone yet. I've been but very you, lucky. Very you lucky. Could, I think. You could. And I've seen people that have gotten to that point. And they go like, I don't know if I should do it. And I'm like, do it, see how it feels. And if it feels bad, then unblock the person. Three days later, man, that was so good. And I'm like, see, you know, tell me in a week how you feel. And it's like, that was the best decision. And it's like sometimes cutting ties from people that are toxic oh. is, it feels impossible and it's not. No, I actually, so I've never had the block. Uh, I've never had to block anybody. I've unfriended people. Like I've literally like I've done like I'm just gonna unfriend you, right? And I'm walking away from that. I don't feel I necessarily need to need to block you. I haven't had someone that will follow me once I get past to, to the unfriend stage yet. Now no. then if I get someone that will follow me, like when I get to that point, then maybe the ban hammer comes down. But it's just like, you know, I I I've seen like some strange blocks too. I a uh, buddy of mine shared shared something. This was during the height of COVID in Sandy, and then all of a sudden, that re the immediate response was, and it, it was innocent. Like it wasn't like it was it was a terrible thing he was saying. It was it was actually like someone trying to say something nice, a positive thing during this possibly. And it was like this information is factual, and I'm blocking you. I'm like, wait, what? Like they reserve like, and that's like. I never want to be that blocker. I I, 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 I never want to be that guy. No. I, I, and we, we've had the, the conversation about people during COVID, uh, COVID and not judging people during these times. Yeah. We, you don't have to judge them, but you also don't have to take their bullshit. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, totally. No, no, I, I, no, no. I, I totally agree with that. That, that. But I wasn't, in that case, it was just, it was just something out there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna block you. It's some people, it's, it's like, okay, so here's a soapbox for next occasion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it, right? That that was it. Wasn't like one of those where it's like, no, no, people, people are crazy. No, it's just like, no. I just I saw that. I was like, I'm never gonna be that guy. I'm gonna be like, I, I'll unfriend you, and if you follow me, maybe then I'll think about blocking you. But I, the, it's like, you're right. I I because I, I did that actually. One of the things I did very early on is some of my friends that I hadn't talked to in a long time, and we we're not connecting on any way. I just like, you know what? Just let's just I thank them for what I had, and I thank them for the friendship I had, and then I walked away. Because I thought it was like it was time and moved on. How many people do you have on on your feed that you go like? Why are we connected? Um, I, I, I my wife has asked me that question. I've gone I've gone like eh, quite a bit. And with with some people, <laughs> they come to mind. And the curious thing is that then the person pops up for X or Y reasons. Like, dude, happy birthday! And you go like, and I was I was gonna have less clutter on my on my friend list, but hey, thank you. I that it means more to me, you know that you took your time took some time from your day to say happy birthday and not hbd yes people are so lazy hbd happy birthday send me a gif but no hbd oh man people and their acronyms just drive me nuts now yeah, i know how to drive you crazy but actually the one that the one i hate the one i hate is um uh smh 
So I, I read that that one. I that one that one's the one I look at and go, why? Like, I, I don't know. I I I enjoy writing shaking my head but if it's twitter and you have a character count i can understand it no there. It, it, this is facebook twitter is a different animal like twitter and tiktok are different i've tried animals to, yeah they're just different animals like yeah right there's character limits so I, I i you have to cheat you have to cheat a little bit there but facebook you don't have that limitation like you you don't so why are you not like or even shakes head like really people get like that 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 that, that people get that yeah, shakes head smh it's like well well we're living in times i i actually heard someone say ha ha lol and i went like oh oh i i i i i i heard uh, uh, i heard that years ago i i had that moment too actually a really funny story it was, it was, he's actually one of my best friends i and i and and uh so I'm I'm not gonna name him because I'm not want to bury him in the press. I thought he was so clever <laughs> because he was saying so many like I am. So people need to understand this about me. I am completely uncool when it comes to television. I don't watch anything at any time anybody else is because I'm too busy creating my own stuff. And uh, oh, man. yeah, yeah, and, and I don't have time. I'm not cool. I don't. I know it will never be cool. I'm watching Fairy Tale the Tartarus art tonight. That's that's what I'm watching, and I'm good with that. And I don't have a problem admitting that to the world. <laughs> However. However, um, so I never seen, I never saw How I Met Your Mother. He was saying things from How I Met Your Mother for like ever, and I thought he was so clever. I watched three episodes of How I Met Your Mother, and I lost all respect for my friend for like a minute. It's like, oh, because everything he's everything he said was from that, including I think the lull. It was like, oh my god, you stole your entire dialogue from this show. No, it's it's cool to. I, I try to not do a quote unless I make it like a blatant quote. It's like yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah, like they said here or something like that. Because, you know, as a writer, that part of my ego is very fragile. And I, if I make you laugh, I want to be the one that makes you laugh, not through a quote. Uh, but I know people that, that they learn monologues. And it's like, dude, you could have used that bandwidth in your brain for so many things. But you decided to memorize something that was you know pretty clever from someone else and it's like uh, no. it, it's some monologues are great like some of them especially when they're heartfelt like you can tell like someone who did that monologue put a lot of heart and soul into it um i have a lot of respect for actors because and actresses because they, they different they, i'm talking i'm talking about your fr a friend of yours that yeah, constantly mentions that and you go like dude skip it's yeah. like if you were an ad, I would skip you. Yes, yeah, no, it's totally true. Like it's totally true. I, but it's like I said, it's one thing to have it. Like I, I think the ones from How I Met Your Mother that have hit culture forever. Challenge accepted. That one, that one, that one's forever there because that's the, that that that. To be fair, that was good. That was a good quote. I can't really deny that that was a good quote. But I mean, I know, right? I got so sick of hearing that because everybody was saying that at one point. It was like, stop. I, I didn't know where this was coming from, and then when I heard it, it was like, oh, my God, like, again. Okay, that's what she said, and challenge accepted, and that's legendary, and doing a variant of what they do on the show, for me, are, are valid in terms of, of conversation because they're just fun, and if people yeah, have yeah. watched the show, it, it's fun. But no, I'm talking about, I'm not talking like a phrase or like a joke. No, dude, I'm, I'm talking like, do you have any, is there anything in your system that isn't script? Oh God, yeah. Uh, I know who you're talking. Yeah, there are people like that. There are people like that, and they're worse because it, when they don't have their script, then then they go right in the small talk, which I hate even more than script. <laughs> right? So I uh, said so it's like um, I, I said this with uh, like I have a real hard time with small talk because I don't get to know the person very well. Right? I don't. I don't have that. There's none of that um, filter. Right? So. So like I, I can't get a sense of who you are. I can't break the ice. How you doing? Fine. Everything's fine. It's like everything. You're like, you're like, literally like you're everything. lucky. You're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like literally everything. Okay. So how about this? It's nice. Like fine, nice, good. And then also you're just like, okay, I'd rather have a script. I, I yeah. hate to say that, but at yeah. least it'll sound different, right? But 
but that's not my my definition of small talk is is meaningless banter between two people that is that is at least mildly entertaining. Small talk, as you're saying, is monosyllabic responses, and it's like, dude, if you don't want to talk, just tell me, and I'll leave. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> give me a syllable, you ass. G give me something real. Uh, like I, I think the only like, like small talk I I don't mind quite so much is um like sports. That's where sort of sports really has it. I, you know, and something I just realized that's actually probably the biggest difference between art and, and sports is sports. There's a small talk like lingo and banter that's universal, right? Mm -hmm. There isn't any of that for art, is there? For what? Like, 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 like a small like, like, like there's for sports, like sports, like different sports. There's yeah. always that, like, that small like, how about them this? Like go like yeah, there's yeah. like team stuff and 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 they talk about the Super Bowl and talk about like that. And you can make fun of each other based on their, your sports teams. You can't do that in art, can you? Like there's not there's not really a way to do that. D depends on it, it. It all depends if you have s stuff that you link up with people. Yeah. Um. Because technically, I've had small talk over books, uh, numerous times, and and from total strangers. Uh, I was I was in a summer in in New York City, and I was reading, um, Harry Potter on the subway, and three people three different people asked me where are you at in the book and then we had small talk because and 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 what i really enjoyed about all three people everyone was super respectful and didn't give spoilers where are you at i will discuss until that point wait until you see what happens in the next two or three chapters all three and i was like that i was so happy and so it, it was so wonderful but in terms of that, and there is small talk of what are you doing if you have a notebook out, and yeah. and then it's like it's you want to have you want to try to have small talk because does because you know there's a lot to go in here, and I did know that I was going to a fast food place uh, way too long when people were asking me if I got into an X or Y chapter because it's like how many times do you have to ask me to make a mental map to know that that kid that sits in that chair is writing a book and he should be around this chapter and it was like oh wow and it's like are you gonna order usual and i'm like i could i could use that at a bar not necessarily at a fast food restaurant that's kind of sad eh. small town not so not so much because it might be all you have right uh no i i got your reference there hijinx i i actually i think that's a strange thing because i don't think you get make like I, I think that's an American thing, making making like uh, making Van Gogh painted amazing works because he was depressed. And I, I I think that's an American thing. I don't know. I like I I've you now grant you Van Gogh doesn't come out of an everyday conversation here either. But at the same token, I don't I don't feel anyone here would make fun of you for it either. It's just, it's not. It's I don't think it's a very. It's not something you you put you'd be picked on here very much. I could be wrong. Yeah. Oh. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. Like, I don't know anything about Australian uh, Australian culture very much, so I don't know too much about it. I, other than who I've talked to over down there, so I, I don't know any of the how oh. the mentality down there at all. So depends on which part of uh, of Australia. I've met people from from a couple of areas, and I thought there wasn't that much of a difference. And there's a huge difference in terms of like <laughs> my like mindset from people in in North. East and and South Australia is drastically different from Western Australia, and I I I, I came to term that uh, I learned about that because when when you're a fan of bodyboarding, um, you you start learning about random places that you would never. Think. When would I have thought to? Oh, I want to go to Western Australia, and Western Australia is like wild savage surf, like. In terms of, of savage surf, Western Australia is is just bonkers in terms of intensity. The only thing that can get more intense um, on average would be uh, you know South Australia because the only thing you have is is, is uh, Antarctica. No, what is what the the Southern Pole? Wow, I just blanked there. Um, the only thing that you have in terms, uh, there's nothing, the storms that generate here and Australia, there's nothing in between. So when a huge swell comes pulsing from the south, um, it's pure untapped. It's like when, when a huge swell comes pulsing from the north to Hawaii. 
it's it's just a pure swell and it's it's intense it's like 40 50 60 80 foot faces that that you go like oh wow oh wow no, that's not that i'd like to try that <laughs> <laughs> bodyboarding i recommend to everyone um uh if, if i had more pull as a writer i would offer writing writing workshops for people that bought bodyboarding and and uh equipment and started to do and i would give workshops while surfing um if i had my way because first off connection to to, to nature second off i love my sport i love it and i love all the all the guys the top guys middle it is such a competitive feel and everyone since since it's bodyboarding and not stand up surfing they they've had to hustle for everything that they have to do uh it's like a multiple world champion he got he, called damien king from australia he got tired of of the whole grind and he got into real estate and he's super successful as a real estate guy the guy's a super ham and he's they call him the joker and whatnot and the guy doesn't stop cracking jokes, but he's excellent at real estate. And and you see the other people that have their own companies. Uh, Mike Stewart with Science Bodyboards and, and Viper Fins, the Hubbard brothers with Hubboards and, and stuff like that. Super genuine people. If you have a question, I, I, I so many times they answer my comments on on either Facebook or Instagram, and just you know really generous and genuine and genuine people, and you get a lot of that from the sport versus stand up surfing work, where, where I think there's a lot of people that are kind of kind of cocks to be honest. There are some people who are super gracious and super cool, super down to earth, extremely thankful for everything that they have and just just really down to earth people and then there's other people that have had money and success since they were 17 and i think that's a really bad combination for most people by the way yeah well i mean i i, I think i think money and success can be can be devastating to anybody any age there comes a point you kind of recognize if it comes my way if it does come my way at this point Oh, I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be an ego stroke. I, 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 I think, I think every one of us on some level would, would, would there be an appreciation, there'd be gratitude, but I mean, your ego does get stroked. And at 17, especially you don't know how to deal with it even, but I know people even older that don't fully know how to deal with it either. It's just, it's just one of those things. I think the best advice I got about, I got about it, um, was actually from a best selling author. He goes, listen, I stroke my ego all the time. Truth of the matter is I do. I just make sure not to do it in public because it's here, right? Because I don't, I don't need to be, I don't need to be a dick to people. That doesn't mean I don't enjoy the perks. There are perks that come with it, and everybody on some level is going to enjoy those perks. But I, you're going to, but I mean, you kind of worked for them. I, I can definitely see that. But at the same time, like you don't have to be a dick about it. And I think when you get, I think there's perspective of it that when you get older. But yeah, but I think that's. I think honestly, it's one of the bigger struggles I think I've seen, and and is that is that like when success does come to you finally, right? Um, and find you know, keeping gratitude because again, it can all go tomorrow too. Like that's the one thing I, I it, it, like it's here today and it can be gone tomorrow. No, uh, twenty nineteen was uh, the last time I was able to, to to have like an event at a con. Yeah. Um, I I had uh, an event in Puerto Rico there were some challenges and obviously a lot of life stuff that was going on, but still I had a really great show mm -hmm. and people were super generous and super nice. It's the most books I've ever sold. I th I think I, it ended up being like 120 books over the weekend, which, you know, for me, for some people that's, that's, you know, whatever. And for me, that's huge. Um, and then I had a show here in Atlanta and I sold a hundred books less. And it was, it was, I was like, okay, I'm lowering my expectations. And I was like, you know, at least I hope I, I can make the booth or something like that. And ooh, it was very different because audiences, um, depends on where you go, audiences vary. I learned that lesson the hard way. And the people that go to the event that I go to are not that willing to, to put their money down for, for like an unknown person. It's, you're more likely to have someone uh, spend money on you on, on something like Jordan con or dragon con, which is like two, you know, Jordan con is a small exhibitor. Um, I don't, I don't even know how many people can go visit that thing, but it's not exactly big. And, and it's in, in like, you know, in, in a hotel, one hotel. 
Dragon Con takes, I don't know, blocks and blocks and blocks. And you need, you need like, you know, you need a, a full squad just not to get lost in Atlanta. Um, and the Atlanta Comic Con was somewhere in between that. And that's the event that people would go to to see if they would like it con. So it would be like the layman, you know, having having a go at it. And there was there were so many things that I that I learned. The, um, the only way to get tickets for the event was buying it the same day. Uh, or at least most of the, the people that were going to that show were buying it the same day. When you multiply the entrance fee versus you plus two kids or three kids, mm -hmm. you go like, okay, so what are we going to see? And then, you know, on top of this, you have to pay for the picture that they want to take with the person and this and that, and they have like 20 bucks left over. And if you have 60 exhibitors selling stuff that you want, and you're not savvy in what you're, you've never gone to a con and you're not savvy on what to buy. Odds are, it's very simple to buy something that you could have bought in somewhere else way cheaper. Cause I saw, I saw people selling Funkos that I was seeing at the store, like at a Barnes and Noble and they were making a killing. And then I saw other people that had some really good material that were struggling. And then I saw someone who didn't have really good material, but the guy's such a salesman. Dude, I saw him all weekend and he was killing it. And I read one of his book and it did not kill me. It killed me in the, <laughs> it, it, it killed me in the bad way. But I cannot at any juncture take away from the game from this guy in terms of engaging with the person and seeing, seeing the rapport that he would get into someone and have them. I've never seen anyone be that su uh, successful in taking a single buy and making a multiple buy in one go. Yeah. And the guy was just bam, doing it, doing it. And the guy really knows what he's doing in terms of that. In terms of storytelling, at least the book that I read. And, you know, and I left a review and I left an honest review because I, I was expecting something and I got something else. And, you know, if you go to a restaurant and, and, and you get something, and you go like, yeah, this is this is kind of raw. Can you please, you know, put it in the oven or something for a bit more? That's fine. But when you have a book, you, you don't have that luxury. No, I, I for me, I, that was less than my first book. Like, I, I am very curious what people are going to think when they get to this one, like coming up next, because I changed my style. Like, and, and I think it's better. Like, I got rid of, I got rid of every said asked question i got rid of every one of those verbs they're not there anymore they're gone i got rid of every one of them right if there if there is one there it's because there's a reason there that okay. and i i learned something very important with the first book in that um ironically the illustration kind of helped me with this too is that you're writing a whole like everything's a giant think of it like as a giant shape imagine everything right and when you look at art illustration it's like a giant shape composed of a bunch of little shapes on the inside Right. Yeah, I, I heard you explaining it like it was Lego. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, yeah. kinda. Right. It, it because it, it's like it's like basically if you look at Lego. Lego is basically is is the great toy of the universe because it's either one very tiny piece or it's a giant structure, right? Composed of many small pieces. A novel is a giant structure composed of many small pieces. So, um, when you put when you're looking at a story. The thing, and this is something, I, and I was mentioning this earlier, the challenge is, what are you trying to make someone feel? What's the story you're really trying to tell? And everything else has to fit that, that style, whatever that is. Because otherwise, what ends up happening is um, you, make the, like, you make the audience feel cheated. And honestly, it, that focus is definitely really helps. So now... What I realize is said's asked questions, things like that. They're shorthand for the actual story going on, the body language, the nuance. Because it's not so much about what's said sometimes, it's about what isn't said. Yeah. Right? That's why I hate small talk. That's why I the monotone small talk. That's why I hate it. Because it says nothing and, and conveys nothing. Right? It, 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 what it tells me is you're not ready to communicate. And, and that's the message you're giving me. You're not confident in your communication for whatever reason. Right, the, the, the one that I'm talking about anyway. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to eliminate all the small talk in my book, right? So let's eliminate all the small talk. Let's get to the substance of it. 
let's see what I can do in terms of psychology, in terms of like movements, actions, what what everything is saying and doing. Um, so I'm gonna, like that. So first draft of this of this next book is probably book's probably going to be about somewhere between thirty and forty thousand words. It's not going to be a big book because I don't want to do big books. But um, thirty forty thousand words. The first edit's going to be okay. All the crap, all the all my bad habits. Let's find them. That one, that one, that one, that one. Like we all have those. Just. Just oh man, I, I've gotten so much better with that word, but just yeah, no, is just very, awful. Very is mine. Very is mine. Very. Yeah, yeah, very is mine. We all have these bad habits. Let, let's just let's just let, let's just go through try to find as many as we have. Um, then I'm like, okay, my goal for feelings is this, 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 and this. Now, some of this I'm not going to be able to fully. You can you you definitely get a good feeling in your work. Yeah, just is a very bad one. It really, really is. For me, yeah. it's very, because very is, is it's shorthand. I realize why it's such a bad habit for me, because very is a shorthand for me. Just feels like it's passive. Like it just, yeah. it just, yeah, yeah. It feels I very need, I need a, someone, someone did a search on, on, I think it was my first novel. And I used just, I think it was like 60 or 70 times. And, 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 and that's not even as awful as I've seen with some other books. Where, yeah. where it's it's every other paragraph, you know, for for one hundred and sixty, for one hundred and fifty two, for fifty four thousand uh, word uh, manuscript to have it used sixty times is not good, but is it's not it's not horrendous. I've seen some people that when people say like, you know, like I don't know, like I don't know, like I don't I don't like I do not like so no like me yeah. no like the like. The only exception I find for like sometimes is dialogue because you can actually create a very interesting voice with that if you do it well. If you do it well, it's actually interesting. I know I know people who speak like that, and the thing is that I, you you would think ah it's a ditz that 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 speaks that way. No, it's it's people that to get from one thought to the other they need that. It's 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 their safety net. It's it's try to imagine that your 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 a conversation is climbing a mountain. And every two steps, you you put like a peg because you don't want to fall. That's like, yeah. it's like I don't know, like black. I don't know, like black. And 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 it's that it's just like they rather than have a pause and think of what they want to say, they use like to get to the next thought, which I think is a fascinating concept, but it's annoying when you read it. Yeah, in in large quantities, unless it's a very specific voice. Because if it's a very specific voice, you can create a very specific reaction, right? So, mm. I, I right, I, it's interesting, like like the exceptions, like okay, why does this word suck? Because this creates that reaction you can't stand. But what if I want you to have that reaction? What if I'm enough of you, right, right? And then and then it's like because now it's going to set you up for where I really want to take you. Because again, it's about it's about manipulate to some degree. It's about manipulating the feelings so you can hide your magic tricks, right? Yeah. This, right. So and if, that's, if anything's deliberate. Yeah. Uh, and and you're using it to, to great effect. It can be awesome if it's because you you haven't cleaned it up and edited. No, that's um, when it gets exactly. Yeah. That's when it gets terrible. That's when it gets no. It's a balance, right? That's why I like such an interesting like from a dialogue standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting one for me because it's like like I just did there. Um, sorry, buddy. Sorry. No, no, but but. It, uh, People or, live in similes and not in metaphors, like yes, or as right. But um, there you go, folks. Definition of a simile. I know, I remember it way back high school. But there, there is something to be said. Like it's a deliberate polish, but also the like there, like there are. It's like as you said, when when you put something in there and you you didn't do it on purpose, it's because you you have a bad habit. Like that's the first draft for me, cleaning that up. My other big weakness is tenses, and so that's the other. So that's that's uh. So that so one two so that's first two second feeling the feeling one so the, uh, so am I trying to manipulate your feelings or and I, I say manipulate is a terrible thing am I the creating the emotional dissonance in my story that's actually probably the right way to say that um, am I creating the right emotional dissonance um, and that sometimes sometimes you know it as a writer if you're doing it because you feel it when you're writing it mm -hmm. sometimes you're not sure because you're blue like there's that weird Space where you're putting yourself in an uncomfortable spot, like you're being vulnerable in a very, very interesting way when you're expressing that kind of thing in your art, and you don't know if you did what you set out to do. 
And that's hard to really, really gauge that when you're in that zone. It's like, did I do that or did I screw it up? And some people will argue, you know, for, for both ways. To give you an example, um, I've seen some people that have been very, very vocal about not using food to describe people. And I go like, but what if you saw someone and, you know, in, in part chocolate or cinnamon or something evoked an image in you? Is that completely wrong? It's objectifying and I'm like, and I'm like, you're on your high horse and I get it. And maybe you've been exposed to that in your life. And, you know, that's not cool. But that versus invalidating something just because it, it, it makes a portion of the the population uncomfortable. I've always found it very in interesting because sometimes you have to double down and say, yeah, you know, that person looks like that. Well, yeah, I well, it's interesting. Like sometimes, sometimes I'm with someone I'm really attracted to. I do like, and not not in a cannibalistic. Way, I do think of food. I do. There is there is that little there is that moment. There is that moment in there. Is it's like you're like hey. a, you're like a chef. Oh my god, these are such a delicious dish. I yeah, want yeah, to yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it's there. I mean, I, I, I'd be less not. I, it doesn't mean I'm objectifying. I, I recognize it, but it, the thought there's just something. There's some. It can be very visceral, and I, 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 I think that's a very. It's a very. Again, it's a very fine line, right? And so it, it's one of those things where it's like, no, I do not want to objectify a woman, but I'd be lying if they, like, you know, I would say like that. That thought didn't cross my mind at, at least once, right? Well, uh, and and then on the flip side, there's there are some people that use those descriptions that are just excruciating. Yes. And and and, you, and that's when I, I, you can address it that way. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Yeah. Um. And and not don't be a hack, and and don't be it. Oh, so I, I think I think my favorite is when um when female authors call out male authors on how male authors describe females. Because you, you read some stuff that you go like, quoi? <laughs> and and even, even, even as a dude, I go like, that, oh, yeah. that's, that's kind of cringeworthy. And the thing is that if I have that reaction, um, you know, other people are going to have that reaction as well. And, and I've seen some stuff that you go like, maybe, yeah, I, I, I maybe really you should it. try another career, my friend, because maybe writing is not for you. Maybe it is, and maybe you find your audience that likes milky white, whatever. Oh it, it, no, I think it, it can be overdone and tired. Absolutely, it, it, it's totally not like. I, I think what I'm what I'm getting across is not to objectify, right? Mm. But I mean, the fact is, yeah. Oh, like yeah, totally like, that. No, absolutely. I'm gonna shit ice cream. It's like that's not that's not. Um, yeah, no, that's that that. There are worth. I I think the one for me. I think the of like the if you read like the old science fiction, like 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 50s, 60s science fiction, some of those guys have never been with a woman. You could tell just based on how they describe them, and you're like, okay. And heck, I, I mean, really? I, I like Asimov as a writer generally, but his way of describing women like the 40s, 50s, and 60s was terrible like no, he just did it he just did not know how to do it and to to julia's point i think one of the biggest challenges is for me when i write i want to offer enough description so that the reader does some of the heavy lifting in terms of of, yeah. of imagining uh for me that's how i think it works best because if you're very specific with your descriptions uh you might limit in terms of how people connect with the character but that's that's my opinion yeah, absolutely. Um, describing people of different races is always very tricky because of what what she says and what mm -hmm. she mentioned, and because a Latino trying to describe a black person or a white person or an Asian person or any other person that is not Latino can or anyone describing another person they use what they think is correct and they they can mess up really bad and end up being cringy, offensive. And and hackneyed, I think, and I think that's actually the worst one, because people go like, "Oh, they've used this description before. Let me use it again." It's like not necessarily a good idea, buddy. No, no it doesn't always work. And I, I think 
you only i mean you do your best like you, you do your you do your absolute best because it as say there's a lot of there's a very fine line and that's why beta readers are such a great thing because it's like hey you know like you might need some help here because I, I don't think you meant this it's like no i really didn't meant this i just didn't know what i was doing i often find like like descriptions like that like what we were talking about is usually because it again like my worst habits with my writing are shortcuts like when i'm trying to shortcut a description and, mm -hmm. and i know I'm, and they go you just intellectually you're being, you're being a lazy fart and, and 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 that part whenever i get into that that's when i get in trouble right when so when i actually take the time and do the actual work to put to put the stuff together that's when it gets that's when it gets very um I still like you're, you're always going to have that risk i think with any kind of description but I, it, I find it's a lot less if there's if you put thought into it generally speaking it does it generally works out but again that's why you have beta readers right yeah. and the moral of the story guys don't be lazy in your writing just just don't i they, don't take that minute to be lazy because when you do that's when you pay for it that is when you pay for it um, and, and when you have beta readers and they're kind enough with their time and their comments, be very gracious and be very thankful. I, I think that, that my middle grade book is the best book that I've read in, in large part because uh, the beta readers that I had, you know, really nice people. Everyone had had some interesting things to say, but um, some people called me out on some things that I was like, okay, I can do that adjustment. And other people were like, ah, I wanted this to be in first person. And I'm like, but it's not. So, you know, I, 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 I get your desire uh, and I could see your point of view. Unfortunately, this story, I, I don't feel it and I don't see it that way. Well, see, I, uh, I, so the Cloud Diver, I actually really play, I use the old school, there's no 13th floor because there's still a lot of places, like even the, I'm, I'm where I'm living right now, Windsor, there's a 12th and a 14th, but there's no 13th floor, right? And I use that, I use that as a key for things happening. And I remember the worst critique I got, the one that I looked at and I just, I just nodded my head and just because there's no point arguing was, there isn't going to be superstitions in the future. I'm like, oh, okay. How, and I, right, it's like, okay, tell you what, we'll do this. How many people have lucky underwear? Raise your hand, because I bet you somebody in here does or somebody has a red ritual. I mean, we, we, we are, we're, story, we're a storytelling ritualistic species. We always will be. We, we just shift on the things that uh, right now I, I I think I have my wallet nearby. I've been carrying around a joker card since 2004 because uh, I have a fixation with the joker. By the way, from the guitar, I have a fixation with the joker. I see that. It's like, and I've carried it down. And I carry it because for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And I do X or Y stuff because I think it's a good idea. Or because it gets me in a headspace where I just don't worry about. I think, I think more than anything, it gets you in a headspace where you stop worrying about stuff that you don't need to worry about. And you can focus on what you have to do. Yeah, Joker is unapologetically himself, for sure. Heidi says there are definitely some female descriptions of females that are really bad too. Absolutely, I, I think description description is one of the is one of the really hardest things. Now I'm going to tell you the last edit I'm going to do with this. Once I get through a, a, a once I get through um, everything but the betas, I'm actually going to try something uh, an author suggestion. I, I don't know if this is going to hurt my head or not. I'm going to actually try to read the thing backwards. And the reason and the reason uh, I, I was told that it was actually a good thing was because. When you read it forward, you can get caught in your own story. Reading it backwards, you can't. So that the work flows, it'll it'll work. Well, I, I do that for proofreading. I don't yeah. do it necessarily for for editing and for for story edits and whatnot. But for proofreading, I, I do read I do read backwards just because it forces you to focus on typos and grammar and stuff like that rather than does this paragraph make sense. So it's it's an interesting mental exercise because y your body is like oh, I want to do that and and to and to Heidi's uh, 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 comment mediocrity doesn't doesn't discriminate this mediocrity and hackney crap can come from anyone at any time absolutely um, but 
man, some guys are really, really bad. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I think the one, the one truth, the one truth is, I mean, for a long time, it was accepted that it was okay to do it this way, and I, I think that I, I, and and now we have evolved, kind of, sort of. I wonder sometimes, but I mean, that's um, you know, I wonder sometimes, but the. So we're trying to be better, and sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. Um, I think I do think we can overcomplicate it too than we have to. Um, there, there's the that's the other extreme, but it's yeah. I mean, descriptions, especially when you look at it from just a historical context, they haven't been very good by and large for quite a few stories. Well, what was acceptable, you know, 20, 40, 60, 70, 80 years ago. Um, it, it's always it, it, in advertising, dude, in advertising, you see some stuff that you go like, Jesus Christ, you know, right now at, at the point where we are, where it's not that, that things are finally right. It's that there's, you feel the shift. We, we you know, we're beginning to feel the shift, like a proper shift in terms of people getting called out on their stuff. Not everyone, not across the board. But there are consequences for people doing what has been done for so long. Uh, you go back forty years in advertising, and you just you see how they describe women and just stuff in general, and and the stuff that they sold. I I ate candy cigarettes, yes, and I'm, yes. I'm, I'm just I. Popeye. That's right. It's like in terms of flavor, obviously I prefer the ones that were solid in terms of, of the whole nuance of looking like you're smoking. The, the, the ones that were chewing gum and you could blow because they actually put powdered sugar, those were the best. I never had that one. I had the Popeye ones. I had the Popeye. I had the, I had the Popeye. Right, the pipe. Nah, dude. And, uh, but th then again, that's why, that's why I, and some people say, everyone's going to say that they were born in, in the best time. In terms of who I am and how I am, I was born in a kick-ass decade because I got the best cartoons, the best candy. I saw the transition between uh, from from the tape to the CD, and it was just a different thing. Um, I, you know, I, I've seen in, in just forty years, I've seen the shift of a lot of crazy stuff that you go like, oh man, that's that's kind of intense. Oh, yeah. and, and, and we went from analog to digital, and I've I've lived the good and the bad of that. Um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I, I, again, I'm not much younger than you. I don't think. I think, I think we're, we're relatively the same age. I'm, I'm, I'm 1981. So yeah, I had the best cartoons. I had the Disney Afternoon. Um, Dude, I, I, right, right, gummy, I bears, gummy bears, gummy bears, gummy bears, gummy bears, gummy bears, gummy bears and Ducktales. Those were my two favorite from Disney. Ducktales or gargoyles? That was gargoyles is a close third. Yeah, but the thing is that Ducktales, uh, gummy bears, uh, gargoyles, and Darkwing Duck. Um, th those are. I can't really argue with your list. The only thing is, I flip gummy bears. I flip gummy bears with gargoyles. Then, but I mean, that's that's yeah. Oh yeah, you know, Ducktales is amazing, right? But how many people do you know have th that? If they see like this this crazy amount of money, they go like, "You're gonna swim uh, like like Scrooge McDuck." That that no, it, it, seriously, I, I I'm I'm gonna try it. I don't, I don't care if I get my ass kicked in copper. I don't care because I I look at it like you know what. That dude was a tough SOB to swim in money like that and not like that's did, a tough man. No, did you see Peter Griffin try it? No, I didn't see look Peter it, Griffin. Look it up. Okay, well, I will look it up. Yeah. It is, nah. but in in terms of that and and also being in Puerto Rico, it's we had so much, so many things, and it's a crossroad. And I did miss out on a lot of things, but if I would have been in another uh, Central American, Latin American, Southern, uh, South American uh, country, I would have missed a, a lot of things. So I got, I got like all the U.S. stuff, and then I got these great things locally, even if they were they, they were kind of cringeworthy. And then I got a. a the thing is that everything blends in my my brain, and I think that something's from Colombia, and it's really from uh, from from another country, and and I think that something's from Mexico, and it's actually from another country. It's like Venezuela, Colombia, uh, Mexico, um, and and then you you see the music that came from Argentina, that came from Chile, and other stuff like that, and you know, seriously, if you haven't watched, I, I know you're not streaming, you're not watching stuff. But 
and, and this is actually incomplete, but Rompan Todo is a documentary on Netflix over uh, about South uh, Latin rock. And it's incomplete because it doesn't include from a bunch of places, but it does show a lot of stuff that I did not know about. And oh. the things that the, those places had to go through, it's crazy. Well, well no, it, like the world, the world never stops changing. That's the one thing, that's the one thing that, that it will never stop. Where we are today will not be the same place tomorrow. That is the great thing. That is that is the great truth of the world. Hard times don't last. Good and bad governments don't last. Nothing lasts. Everything changes. That is the nature of the world. So, um, and in forty years, I mean, if anything, it's changing faster than it was than it was when when we started. I I like I said, I remember the cartoons. I remember the analog to digital. I remember. Um, you know, Kurt Cobain, I, I, I remember like the, the 90s metal. I remember Eminem. I remember like all this stuff that was coming up throughout. That was what I grew up into. And then, and then I'm no longer cool. So I, 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 I just decided that uh, I never was cool. It's okay. Um, but uh, I, I decided that uh, I, I decided like, like you said, now I enjoy my own thing. I mean, I've tried things I've tried. Uh, Arabic rock and roll is pretty cool. Like Arabic rock and roll is pretty, pretty fun. Uh, Indian metal. I got to listen to some Indian metal with uh, Chuck Pinot. That was that was wild. Yeah, I I listened to uh, it's it, it's 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 like metal Bollywood. Um, I forgot the name of the band, and, and I actually listened to them for a bit, and it's great. Yeah, no, it's like we we the cool thing about today uh, is we all can talk to each other. Um, that's the one. I, I think that's the best thing about this time. It's probably it, it's the only thing about this time that's really awesome. Is we all recognize, hey, I'm talking to you in 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 Georgia. I'm in Canada, right? And we're just having a great little conversation about life, the universe, and everything. And I can have this conversation tomorrow. I'm having a conversation with somebody from India, because I can and I will. And why the hell not? And since I started chatting, I've been I've been able to chat with people from around the world, and uh, you know, to to know that I have people that not only read me but that that I know and that I care for from Nepal, Pakistan. Um, let's let's leap to another uh, bunch of countries from Germany, Sweden, uh, Denmark. Uh, let's jump again. Let's go to Spain and France. I have friends there. I have friends in the, in the UK, in Ireland, Scotland, and and the UK, and one in Wales. I have friends in Australia. I have friends in New Zealand, and you. And the thing is that the wealth of knowledge that these people share with me, and they go like, "Have you heard this band, or this artist?" And you go like, oh, let's give it a try." Um, you know, from New Zealand, Jordan Rain is an indie musician, and she's brilliant. She's so brilliant. And by the way, sea shanties are now a thing again for yes, some they reason are. on TikTok. Um, her sea shanty, uh, that song is really good and she's, she's brilliant. And I really hope that she finishes her new album soon. Uh, but if I hadn't had a random conversation with a fellow author from New Zealand, I would have never learned about Jordan rain yes. or I might, I might have delayed even longer. Well, no, no. And then to say, I'll, I'll, I'll look at, I, I saw that she shanties are back. I read, I was reading about it on all places, LinkedIn. This is like, Hey, they're back. I'm like, what the hell? Oh no, they've always been a thing in, in Nova Scotia. Absolutely, Nova Scotia has always been the home of Caesar. And yes, Heidi, I love gar like everybody loved gargoyles too until it became the Goliath Chronicles. Then, then, then it wasn't so good. But yeah. when it was when it was just gargoyles, it was great. Ugh. And I even have I even have a song that's kind of a sea shanty. <laughs> that that it's on YouTube. I'll send it to you. I'll send yeah, it to that'd you. be awesome. That, that, that'd be great. Hell, if you send me just the audio, I'll play it on the audio edition of this. It's like JD's one and only C Santi live. I, I can make that like a big thing. It's uh, you can tell me if it's it's a proper sea shanty or not. I don't think it is, but someone said it. Oh man, that's kind of like a pirate song. And I'm like, hey. Hey, so 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 ladies and gentlemen, JD Estrada is kind of like a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Shantai esque. Yes. Shantai esque. <laughs> and then the title is parentheses, not a pirate song. Uh, dude. Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can announce. I think I could be a, a, a killer announcer. But, anyways, uh, you're a good dude, my friend. You're honestly, you're, you, you, I hope people discover you more because you are a great, 
great dude. And honestly, thank you for everything you've done for me in the last year. It's been, it's been pleasant. fun. Yeah. It's going to keep being fun. And I, I'm super happy to connect you with so many good people and that you, you guys connect and have such a good time. I, every time I see it, I, it, it, it truly, that is so awesome. That's yeah. so awesome. So this is JD Estrada. If you guys have not checked out anything by him, you should. He writes in English and Spanish both, right? Um, actually, I should. I'll, I asked Nidia this. I'm going to ask you this. Like, what's easier for you, Spanish or English? I'm 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 more intimidated about writing in Spanish for extra. Writing. It's it's my first language, and 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 still, I think just my grades alone in in high school demonstrate that I I I have a certain level of of respect for it. Um, it's just a more, more complicated and less malleable language. It's richer and it's it's a gorgeous language, but English is, you know, you can do so much randomness with it in terms of how you make up a uh, like a sentence or make up words. I think I make up words in Spanish, but the ease with which you can do it in English is just insane. So I find English is, is, is just, let, let, I'm not gonna say that I'm better or worse. I'm just gonna say that I am more familiar with that painting style uh, than than I am in Spanish. Even if, um, and also what I write in each language has a, its own feel to it, which I, I, is another thing. Uh, the things that I most enjoy reading are are sci-fi and fantasy and stuff like that. And in in Spanish there's a lot of dependence on getting translations of some of the most popular books. And I don't, I don't get exposed to as many books as you know, in those genres as in English In English, there's a, an overabundance. Thanks to England, um, England and, and the U S just those two countries, you get an overabundance. And then you see translations from German, which are pretty good or from Swedish, which are pretty good. Um, and it's you know it's it's definitely a thing so i'm just more familiar with english i am doing more spanish and more spanish is on its way i just take longer with it it's an, uh, it's interesting the reverence and respect okay i'm gonna ask a personal one you don't have to answer this one do you think more in english or spanish i'm 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 switching in both languages uh constantly um depends um i just don't force myself to to think in one in one language no. or the other uh and basically i, I do the, the thing where i switch from one language to another and i always i always tell people that that are bilingual tell me if i'm if i'm messing up the grammar because i think it's actually pretty accurate because i can switch from english a espanol y hacerlo conjugando and just go back to english Y no me pierdo, and I just keep going and going. You know, importa si yo cambio diez mil veces, I'm always going to be able to keep my brain going in both engines. And, That's yeah, and that I can't do. So when I speak, je, je parle français comme si comme ça, mais je ne parle pas français en 27 ans, because my, I just haven't had a chance to practice French in a very, very long time. But every once in a while, because I took a little Spanish too, when I speak, when I speak French, right, I'll, I'll go, je parle français, and I'll go right into Spanish because it's such it's it's the same part of the brain with me, right? So it's just like and they're okay. both romance languages, and yeah, it's, they, they, yeah. And there's a moment, and there and there are moments where there's like no different, like they're, they're not that different. The difference is so slight. Like I don't even catch myself. It's like I went I went from English, I went from French to Spanish, and back to French. Did anyone understand what I just said? We yeah. think so. We think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, and, and 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 since I only have two languages, I can I, I probably can can do that easier than other people that are actually you know smarter and have more abilities. Than, because if you at, if you talk to people in Europe, there are so many people that speak like you know three, four, five, six languages. It's crazy. All right. No, and it, it, because you get to get used to it because it, because there. You have different countries, different span. Like every every place has kind of its own identity. So it, you won't, you almost if you're doing business and you're traveling abroad and meeting people, you're just you're going to pick it up really really quick. Um, you have to. Yeah, no, no, it's it's life. Like you have to, you're going to pick it up quick or you're going to get left behind, and that's just the way it is. And we could do a whole another conversation about that, but I think we're going to wrap this up soonish because I think I I enjoyed. You this, keep right? going, dude. <laughs> 
we, we keep going, but I, I, I think, I think we have a good conversation here. Um, yeah. what, is there anything coming out? There are things that I'm working on. Um, it's been a challenging beginning. The plans for this year are to be busy, but until I don't, uh, uh, until something's going to come out, uh, I'm not going to do it. Um, what I will tell you is that I will not do it in an organized way every four to five to six weeks. And if I release two or three things in one month, so be it. Uh, this year, I have no intentions and no interest at all in being organized in that way. Yes, I will promote. Uh, hopefully, I'm, uh, I will do, I, I think I'm doing a bit better. You know, I can't say I'm doing it well because I'm just, you know, I, I put more effort into a double O bananas video than I do in, into promoting sometimes, I think. But um, I do both. And as long as I enjoy what I'm doing and what I'm posting, I'll keep doing it. I. Last year, I did um, word, word searches. I did image, uh, hidden images. I did find something in the covers. I did a bunch of stuff that I was really enjoying, and I'm going to retake that just to promote it. Uh, so in terms of when something new is going to come out, give me it till March. <laughs> okay, no, it, it, dude, it's cool. I, I, I'm going to be like, I'll, I sh hopefully at that point, we'll be knee deep in edits of one, and then I'm going to go into, then I, I'll be knee deep in edits in the one book, and I'll be finishing parallel universe dragon saying so that on doesn't kill where is the book where is that one she, she, she she's tough that one she might beat me and i, I, I don't think i could take it she's like she, she looks like she could take me so she's sweet but i i'm sure that she packs a punch oh no i i know she's it, it no i actually truthfully i think the great best thing about her she showed me she made me understand hands like when drawing hands she helped me understand how to draw them i was like oh Okay, and I can draw hands. Now they're not necessarily the greatest hands in the world, but the fact is, you can tell their hands, which is something that it's like, yes, I know what I'm doing somehow, it, somehow, it, some way. But this, it is this, progress. Hey, progress is progress. Yes. So it is. on that note, how can people find you so that people can at least hang out with you because you're a cool dude and people should hang out with you? I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Uh, I do have a blog, uh, which is jdestradawriter.blogspot.com. The title of the blog is for writing out loud. I do have a YouTube channel. Um, I have a couple of books that are in the um, plus. I also do, uh, oh no, you just disappeared on me, buddy. Am I still connected? Because you, you, you're kind of connected, but you, you, you're kind of. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. You're kind. You, you're there. I see you. You're moving, but your connection. So, so, try to repeat that again before. The oh game. man. Okay. Yeah. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and YouTube. I'm on there. I'm gonna be more active on on pretty much all of them. Um, I also do contributions to the Go Indie Now channel. I do indie music reviews and I have a couple of fun ones coming out because I think people need good music. And and dude, if, if you can't find me in any of those places, connect with Josh and he'll relay, I'm sure. Yeah, no, I will because he, he's a cool dude. Whether uh, And I whether JD knows this or not, actually he's getting a little acknowledgement in my next book, whether he realizes uh, it or not. No, you are, you are. I, I, uh, I made a point like for the next book because it was you uh, Jennifer Ron, Susie Vidori, um, and there are a few other on and a few other people went out of their way to help me above and beyond what they had to do. And so I, as a, and and by the way, Heidi, it includes you too. Hate to say it, includes you too. Um, you don't hate. She's a she's the double L angel. She's awesome. no no no. She's she she's a, she's and a she's an amazing human being. I really got, it was a pleasure to meet her this year, and she should come on the show at some point as well. She should come on, and in March I'm gonna be on LitCon with her and and a bunch of other authors. So be sure to to check that out. We're gonna be promoting that a bit more. I, and, I just signed up for LitCon now. I'm hoping to see if I can get myself into a couple of events. No. But for ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this great time this is jd estrada he's amazing i'm josh pentolaresco if you want to support me you can do so a number of different ways follow me on twitch twitch.tv slash just joshing podcast my youtube channel is joshua pentolaresco i have books out that one is alice zero and the cloud diver they are available exclusively on amazon probably will go wide at some point this year when i when i when i go to my next plan to take over the world I, i'm only i'm conquering as many things as i can one at a time my next book is lights out Stay inspired, uh, keep shining in the dark, 
and I'll see you guys tomorrow with two interviews, including a very special one in the e in the evening. I'll announce that a little bit later. But until then, guys, take care, and I'll see you tomorrow.